Hi everybody, my name's Alan and on behalf of the crew of the show I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, as I was sitting here waiting for the show to go on, I was just getting this real strong feeling that, that beauty is, is really right there. That, it, it, that we're, we're going into a time, we're leaving a time, but we're more importantly going into a time where love and beauty are really going to overtake us. That all we have to do is just be a little open, a little hu humble, a little prayerful, and, and great beauty and great love will, will enter our lives and fill us even more than we've been filled before. So I'm just looking forward to it, and I hope all of you out there are looking forward to it. And tonight's show is really an example of that. I mean, we have old friends with us and new friends and, and, and women of just extraordinary power and, and, and grace. But more important to me is that, that that power and grace comes with a humbleness and a delight and a gratefulness in, in the gifts they've been given and, and the glory they feel. So as you've seen on the show a few times before, we have a, a singer-songwriter who's one of my favorites, and I've said before I play her, her album so many times that I, I almost wore right through it, Marilyn, who's got a new album coming out and she's going to play some songs for us tonight. And also we have Patrice Karst, who's written a, a really delightful and inspiring book called God Made Easy. And, you know, so much we talk about, and we've had so many shows where so many words have been used and so many different ways of looking at God and love and truth and dedication have, have come through this show. But tonight we have somebody who in a way has really simplified it and made it open to everybody and it's just really a wonderful little book and it's a bestseller and we're just really delighted to have Patrice with us tonight. So please just settle down, relax. I think you're in for a, a really extraordinary evening where, where that love and beauty that, that I feel so strongly is coming is, is going to really be with us tonight. So as we normally do at this time, just to set a tone and, and, and an experience for the show and to, to drop us down inside, to lock us in no matter what went on for the rest of the day. So let me lead you in a short meditation. Just follow me. If you've done a meditation before, use the technique you know. If not, just kind of follow your breath or, or if you don't want to do that, just kind of watch the screen, kind of watch the vibration off me. We can maybe do some special effects. So try that and just, just quiet down and be ready for an experience of beauty. Thank you. So please, just, just pay attention tonight. There's going to be a lot of love and, and inspiration available. And we're going to start with Marilyn singing a really beautiful song, Who Knows Where the Time Goes. So Marilyn, whenever you're ready.
deserted shore Your fickled friends are leaving Ah, oh, but then you know It's time for them But I will still be here I have no thought of leaving I do not count the time Who knows where the time goes Who knows where the time goes Until it's time to go So come the storms of winter And then the birds in spring again I do not fear the time For who knows how Who knows where the time goes? Who knows? Who knows? The time, time goes. Hi, everybody. As you can see, I'm on the set with Patrice. Thank you, Marilyn. That was beautiful. So, Patrice. When you wrote this book, God Made Easy, it's a really interesting story we're talking about today. Why don't you tell everybody about it, how the idea came to you and how the book came to you? Well, basically, Alan, what happened was I you know, I'm, had no intentions of writing a book. I'm a single mom. I was working a full-time job. And even though I'd always been a spiritual seeker ever since I was a little girl, I've been someone that wanted to know how this planet worked and why we were here and where we were going and what the whole thing, this whole life gig was all about. But um, I never thought I would write a book about anything that had to do with my spiritual path. But I woke up, it was uh, November 11th of 1995, it was 6 o'clock in the morning, and I woke up out of a dream. And I just saw the words, God made easy, just like, you know, a couple of inches away from my eyes. And I had no idea why I was seeing these I words. mean, you actually <laughs> saw it. I mean, it was visual. It was a visual, and it was wow. also audio. I mean, right. I, I heard it, and I saw it, and... I've had different interviewers say, well, was it a male voice? Was it a female voice? It was none of the above. It mm -hmm. was just this, I can't explain it other than to say I saw the words and I heard them. And this inner voice, if you will, said, go get a notebook and start writing. And I went into my little office area. I grabbed a notebook, came back, climbed in bed, and uh, I started to write. And it just came pouring out. You know, I'm not going to say it was channeled or it was automatic writing. Right. I, I can't even it's label. It's hard to say, right? Yeah, I, I, I can't label what happened. All I know is that I started writing. There was no thinking. There was no pausing. There was no rewriting. There was not one moment where I stopped and said, hmm, how would I want to explain that concept? It just came out in one stream of consciousness. Wow. Yeah. So Amazing. the final book, as it was, was written from like 6 to 8, November 11th. Like six, to six to 7. Six to 7. One hour. One hour. Yeah. So you could teach one of those courses how to write a book in one hour. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now there aren't a lot of words in this book, so I mean, it's not like it's not Dostoevsky in terms of pages of words. But so, and then 
basically it was like one step led to another and then it was out and it was out with a big publisher and yeah, it's all it over the country and one, the bestseller and absolutely it was it compl you know I still whenever I tell the story I get goosebumps which in the book I call God bumps um, it's just been one mind-blowing experience after the other I wrote it uh, three weeks later I was signing my first publishing deal then you didn't have an agent at the time I didn't you have an agent and just called up publishing companies and said I've written this mass market book about God, it's going to be huge and I'd like to give you the first opportunity to uh, to purchase it. <laughs> Actually that's funny because we were talking earlier and tell them the story what you sent to get you know some comments from Mary Ann Williamson right. who everybody knows is you know famous in you know these kind of circles so tell them this story. Well you know I heard that in order for um, a book to have the greatest chance of success and I figured you know if I was going to be one of Why? God's spokespeople I better try right. to help it along. Right. Um, so I started sending the book out to different famous authors to see if I could get endorsements and one of the people that I sent it to was Mary Ann Williamson and uh, I get a phone call back from New York from her literary agent who said, um, look, Marianne's in Egypt leading a spiritual tour, but I found your manuscript on her floor in her apartment in Manhattan. Out I of a stack of hundreds. Out of a stack of, I just, It just yeah. like fell out when yeah. I knocked into it. it when, I first, like, when I first got the phone call, I really thought it was someone goofing some on joke. me. I yeah, I did. I thought it was someone getting their husband to, to the make a big... Play, you know, yeah, like a practical joke. Somebody comes up to me in the street, I always look around for where's the director behind me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But it wasn't a joke. I mean, right. the more I listened to this guy on the right. phone, I was, oh my God, this is real. And he was a big literary agent big, in New York. Big, big literary agent represents, you know, Suzanne Summers and Joan London and so you, you have know, a the list you can goes. get thigh masters. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's not an issue. He's either. an amazing, amazing, amazing agent and he called me and said, I love this book, I want to represent you and I said, I'll let you and uh, he sold it to Time Warner a few weeks later and the rest has just been And one. that's one of the biggest publishing houses and right. Yeah. So so when you when you think of like God made easy, I mean we've had, as I said in the introduction, like this is I don't know the fifty some odd show we had. We had like a lot of words and a lot of words about God and love and truth. So when you wrote this book, God made easy, like what was your intention? I mean besides it like bulge over, but like looking back, what is like the, would you say the message you know to you and that you know you would like other people to get from it? You know, I've been asked that question a lot, and I would say there's I a couple... I only ask questions that everybody knows. <laughs> Well, you ask good questions. <laughs> you know, the truth is that um, if all the books that are 400 and 500 and 600 pages were helping people really understand God, then the world wouldn't be in the mess that we're in. And the truth is that um, God really is very simple. Your experience of that, like, higher power is simple. It's, it is. It's it, direct it, and simple. It's always been simple. Um, Basically, what the message of the book is, is that there is one God and this great magnificence that I may choose to call God and you may call higher power and you may call Holy Spirit, Divine Mother, Heavenly Father, the man upstairs or something bigger than me right. um, or it Buddha or matter. Krishna. No, one name, you know, I mean, one many edit, names, one, one God. And right, what right. matters is not what name we call God, but that we call because, uh, you know, the truth is that to go through this life not knowing that there is this great magnificence not that is indeed and not, not experiencing, experiencing right. that there is this great magnificence that's in charge of all things that makes sure that the sun is in the sky every right. day and that the stars are in just the right place in the sky I think would be a terrifying way to go through life. I mean I can't even imagine it. So the message of the book is that there is a great God and there's many ways to get to know this God. You don't have to go to church or temple necessarily. You know, you can find God in nature, in babies, in great music as we just heard from, what a beautiful singer by the way, incredible yeah, singer. Um, God is in all things and there are many ways to bring this presence closer to you and to your life and that's what the message of the book is and it's there are many you know we talk about that a lot is that there are many spokes in the wheel and we just want to get to the center it doesn't really matter how I mean, right or I call it the top of the mountain there's many paths right. up to the top of the mountain and it's time that in this world that all the religions come together and stop their pathetic bickering uh, in the name of God and fighting and realize that we're all in this together. We're all trying to get to the same place. We all want to experience love. 
Yeah, and we have we're all brothers and sisters of the you know right. we're all Under children the of the one great right. creator. Right. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if you've seen some of the flyers, but they all say on actually every flyer, even with the flyer for this show, is dedicated to the oneness. That's it. And that's you know to have that experience, then we wouldn't do what we do to the trees and the oceans. And, you know, if we felt that we were part of everything. Right. Absolutely. You know, and, and all the you know and all the different colors and religions are just like different suits and different shirts and. Exactly. You know, we make a big thing out of it, but you know why? I and mean, what about the holy wars? I mean, isn't that an amazing it's, thing? It's and, and, and awful. The, you know, and even people who both worship Jesus Christ, but the, you know, the difference is kind of like, you know, yes. and, and there are holy wars, thousands of them all the time. Well, me. you know, and that's part of the problem, isn't it? You know, it's been amazing because the letters that I've gotten from literally all over the country, from everything, from I've had letters, suicidal teenagers, drug addicts, alcoholics, convicts, ex-convicts, Catholic priests, you know. I mean, every kind of person, every walk of life I've been getting letters from. And it's been really the highlight of my day is going to my P.O. box and just getting these letters. And I get in my car and I open them up. And I mean, it's, it's the most greatest part of this whole experience. Right. And, and it's so interesting because even though they now all how have... people are touched by this. Touched by it, touched by the simplicity. You know, so many people, because they had um, organized religion shoved down their throat as children, and this is not to knock organized religion because right. it certainly has its place. And if it's bringing you a closer experience of God, then by all means, church, temple, you know, right. mosques, whatever your thing is. Unfortunately, there are so many people that... If anything, the organized religion that was shoved down their throat as children has turned them off to God, turned them off to even that word God. And the letters I've gotten from so many people have said, thank you for helping bring God back into my life and making me realize that God and religion are actually two very separate entities. Mm -hmm. And this book, you know... They this, weren't supposed to be. They were not supposed to be. And, and usually when they started out with the teacher, before, you know, all the layers got added on. The problem is that dogma and misinterpretation and regulations and rules, rules. and egos and right. all the other the stuff came who, in. The people who, who, were, who were having the experience are no longer, in, you know, leading it. So, exactly. So other people, exactly. we just have an idea of the experience and how you would do it. Exactly. And so, you know, what, what the message basically that they're saying is that, wow, Oh, so I can ha bring God back yeah, into well, actually, my life. Actually, let me show. This is the book. I don't know. We have a bigger picture, but I mean, it's a real, it's a, you know, it's just a cute little book, and it's really, it's simple, and it's, you know, just the right size, and it's just, we have a bigger one. We'll show it later, but here it is, God Made Easy. And it's, it's, really, it's really just a simplistic and beautiful message of, and, and so you were thinking also of, of putting these letters in a book because they're inspiring. They're so inspiring to you that well, you think they'd be... Well, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. You know, I thought maybe one day I'll do another book called The God Made Easy Letters, How America Feels About God, because these letters people... You know, it's not like I wrote a book on how to apply mascara, you know? Right. I mean, when you write a book about God, it's a very charged subject. So people pour their hearts out into these letters, and they're exquisite. But by the same token, I also get letters from very fundamental religious types that are very angry at the because fact that, the, lo and behold, yeah. I said that God is here for everyone. Can you imagine? What, what so a terrible the, thing to say. In other words, if you're not in their spec right. specificity, you're going to go to hell. You're, you're lost and you're, you're, you're the devil. You're a lost soul and they're going to help you. Not only are you lost, but you're right. helping other people be lost yeah. by publishing this. Right. And so, but, the, you know, but the positive letters are like 10 to oh, 1, 100 oh, to 1. Thank goodness. Or I'd right. be, you know, Right. You wouldn't want to go to your post office. Yeah. Box, no, 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 no. <laughs> but I think it's a, it's a very fascinating study to do because the letters from people that, that respond positively, which is 95% of them, are so beautiful. They're so exquisite. They're so heartfelt. So right. The other ones, the few, are so angry. angry. And that's the part that just crushes me inside, you know, mm -hmm. why anyone should feel like to discuss God. There has to be anger, so much right. anger in them. Yeah. Yeah, dogma can do that. Yeah, it certainly can. So. What do you, you have an audio tape of this too, but done by uh, um, Ellen, Burstyn, Ellen Burstyn, one who, of my favorite actresses. Well, what was that movie she made? That was a beautiful movie. Where she Resurrection. Played Resurrection. Resurrection. Boy, that was a great yeah, movie. she did an amazing job on the audio, and David Arkenstone, who's one of my favorite musicians, scored the music, and it's. I tell you, I just feel like a kid in a candy store. Right. I feel like this has just been the most. Actually, amazing it's an interesting thing. story about. David. David. Well, yeah, because the audio people called me up and they said, Patrice, we're getting ready to select music for your audio. What's your vision? 
And I was like, my, oh, my vision. I was just thrilled they were going to do an audio. I hadn't thought about my vision. And I said, well, all I know is I love the music of David Arkenstone. He really takes people on journeys musically. And they said, well, we can't actually get you know, the exact name musicians because it's expensive and legalities. Right. We'll, but we'll get our local We'll get band. our composer to right. do something similar. And then they called me two days later and said, you're never going to believe who's composing really? the score to this. So the whole thing has been like a magical journey. One miracle after the other. It's Topped just off by this show. Ap yeah, and <laughs> meeting you, Alan. Right. Well, there you got <laughs> it. So I guess uh, maybe, you know, we'll get ready. We'll talk a little more. We'll get ready. Uh, Marilyn's going to sing her second song, Listen right. to Your Heart. So Great. we'll do that. So where do you see yourself going? I mean, you'd like to go out and talk about the book. and I have. Well, I have been. I've been, been doing, doing a, lot a lot of that. Of talk shows yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm waiting for instructions. You know, right, this thing came to me you. without me planning it, right. and so I figure he knows what's next. And now your next. kid's got the flu, so you know you got to do it. I know. Down. And Eli's watching us right now. I love you. Mommy loves you, honey. Right. Hope you feel better. So whenever we're ready in the booth, let's listen to Marilyn again. Listen to your heart. It's a beautiful song. Please listen. Some people say the mind is everything we need And through the mind we all will understand Yes, the mind is key, for it creates all we see But it's through our hearts we love We learn to play and learn to trust it's through our hearts we all connect to God. So listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. And you hear what God has planned for you. Listen to your heart. Follow where it leads. No matter what, listen to your heart. God has walked upon this earth, the masters from the start. And when we study what they have to say, all comes down to the heart. Love's the only way, and it's through our hearts we heal. We learn to play and feel the peace. It's through our hearts we learn to see our light. Love is there alive in us, a sacred flame inside our hearts. Through our hearts it shines, it shines through yours, it shines through mine. Let it shine. Listen to your heart, and you'll hear what God has just for you. Listen to your heart, follow where it leads, no matter what, listen. Just for you. This 
Thank you, Marilyn. Also, uh, I think you saw uh, uh, Marilyn's first album cover, Cause to Celebrate, the one with half her picture and half, I guess it's the uh, globe of something like that. So that's Marilyn's first album. The new album that she's putting together, which some of the, these songs are from, actually I think all of them are from, uh, hasn't come out yet. There's, a, you know, they've been going through different titles. So we'll, we'll let you know when we know the name of that and when it's going to be released. But the, the, the one you saw was the first album, Cause to Celebrate. So here we are back with Patrice. Hi. Hi. So now you're a single mom, so I mean that's, how, how is this, you know, like intertwined working with the book and getting all these letters and traveling and raising a child? How's that work for you? <laughs> Not so easy. So God has a real sense of humor, right. that's all I could say. Um, it's a challenge, you know. I mean, you know, the emphasis there was on single mom, right. which is a very different experience than just a, mom, a right. regular mom. I've been a single mom since he was born, and so yeah, the traveling and um, all that is a challenge, but he's just really part of the team. He's so excited about this book, and he comes to all my book signings with me, and he's in the studio now, you right. know, laying on a couch watching we this and everything. We hope he's still awake. Well. Yeah, we hope so. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a challenge, but I'll tell you what, Alan, he completely keeps me on track spiritually. I mean. You know, every mom thinks that her child is, you know, the Special. most precious. You know, God just creates that happening right. so that you can put up with all the stuff you put up with as a mother. But he is so into God himself. He has such a deep relationship with God that he really reminds me of a lot. I mean, I'll tell you something that just happened today, right? I mean, talk about the wisdom of children. We were driving along on the way to school. And there was some man in the car next to me, and I don't, you know, I was just rambling on about something. And I said, "Wow, that guy looks kind of mean, huh, Eli?" And he said, "Mommy, that's not how it works." And I said, "What?" He said, "A person's goodness is what's inside them, not what they look like on the outside." And I was like, "Oh my God!" <laughs> yeah, actually, it's Humble. interesting you say that because we were talking earlier. We, had, we were having dinner together, and that I know a lot of young kids, you know, friends of mine who have children, and. There are a lot of them are around the same age as your son, yeah, Elijah, six, yeah. who's six. And they're just extraordinary. They're extraordinary on computers. They're extraordinary about God. They're extraordinary. So I think that's really something's happening in coming into this new age. You talk about that in the book, that you know we're coming into this, this new time. And I, and I was saying at the beginning, I'm really feeling it strongly. Why don't you talk a, a little bit about that, about like, you know, this new millennium that's happening, that, you know, this energy you feel. I get asked a lot when I'm doing a lot of, you know, speaking and interviews around the country, what do I think is going to happen? Has God let me know? And no, <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not a prophet. I've never pretended to be. Um, I think it's fairly obvious that we're in a mess. You know, I don't think you have to be, you know, an enlightened sage to know that. I think it's also obvious, um, at least to me and to a lot of people, thank goodness, that it is time that we all come together and that we all figure out just what the heck we can each individually do and then what we can globally do to save this planet that we're on for these children mm -hmm. that are here. Um, it's time that mankind, and I think that it is happening, um, mankind wakes up to the fact that we are here for a deeper purpose than to work on our body fat percentages, to earn our living, to remodel our houses, and whatever the heck we think is so All unbelievably important. Yeah, because the truth is that we're here for a limited time, and 
many of us have been wasting that time, precious time. So what's interesting is that it seems that the light is increasing on the planet in almost equal proportions to the massive suffering that still seems to be occurring visibly in every nook and cranny of the globe. It's like everything is speeding up very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, I know the light's going to win, but I think we're in for some rocky times, and I can't think of a, really, a more important time to develop a deep and meaningful relationship with your creator as just your seatbelt, because I think we're in for a bit of a ride. I don't know how it's going to play out, but... Um, well, everybody's got crosses to bear any time in any lifetime, even without the new millennium. Absolutely. You know, it's an, we were talking about this earlier, it's just an interesting experiment here, and for everybody, there's at least some difficulty. Absolutely. In some which way, Absolutely. Shape or no form. one gets out scot free. I, I haven't seen it yet. No. <laughs> but, um, you know, the good news, the good news is that I think we are going to be entering into a time that is going to probably be the most ecstatic era ever known to mankind. Well, that's um, what everybody's been saying, is that yeah, the whole I mean, planet seems like it's ascending. I mean, I, I think it's happening by your book and. You know, the shows that are happening, and not this show for one, but... <laughs> Why not? But no, I'm only kidding. I'm <laughs> no. I mean, really, I mean, you know, because I hear about it a lot, too, as you do, because I get calls from all over the country, you know, that I just saw your show, and, you know, where can I get a hold of Patrice or, you know, Claire or, you know, any of the guests, and, and people really are hungry to know more, to, to meet with people, to well, talk you know to how, people. Well, you know how you can tell about that? I mean, think about it, 15 years ago books on the New York Times bestseller list were not spiritual books. If you look on the New York Times right. bestseller list, Deepak, five, or six, five or six of the right. ten top books are spiritual books. Right. That, the Celestial that tells prophecy. me, exactly, that tells me that the hunger is there. The masses, you know, are very hungry and are very interested in spiritual matters and it's about time. And so um, I think that we're entering into a very exciting, it's a very exciting time to be alive. But we also, you know, I think we all signed up to be here, but I think that, you know, it's not necessarily gonna be an easy time. Mm -hmm. You know, just the same way in the old pioneer days when they were, you know. Crossing the. Exactly, you know, to the, to going to the new land. I mean, right. that's what we're doing. But um, the, I think The wagon we all, trains broke down sometimes. <laughs> yes, and the Indians came. Right. And, you know, and I think that, we're going to each have to deal with our own Indians. The internal Indians, the internal Absolutely. Indians. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we have to have a sense of humor. You know, that's one thing about the book is that one of the reasons why it's touched people and that it they let me take know is... It so seriously. You know, there's a lot of humor. I believe that God is one of the greatest tricksters around. And, you know, it's a funny thing. It's a real dichotomy. But in the same um, fashion that we, we do need to take things seriously because you know we are the guardians of this planet and it's it's time that we help you know clean up the mess we've created and mm -hmm. I include myself in that right, by no, the way I, I certainly don't want this to sound like I'm you know this enlightened right. person that huh, and mankind needs to do this I mean I'm just you know I have my own obnoxiousness and idiosyncrasies and fears they've and, already caught that don't oh they? no really <laughs> no, <laughs> on second yet. thought no. But no, but actually what's funny about that though is I've had a lot of interviewers say to me, well, why you? Why, why were you the spokesperson, you know, right. for this particular message? And, you know, who gives you the authority? And it's right. true. I'm not a doctor of divinity or a rabbi or a minister. I don't have a PhD and MD or for that matter, I don't even have a college degree. And we definitely live in a society that puts an incredible value on college degrees. We call it higher education, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting because to me a higher education what was Jesus's is Jesus's degree or yeah, really, Buddha really. or Muhammad. No, this is not to put down academia or no, I you understand, know, but I mean we I mean, have we have a very ask, interesting right. level of what we consider to be so important and some of the kindest and most incredibly wise, wise versus intellect. See, I go for wisdom. I think wisdom is what we should be striving for, um, are people that didn't have degrees. And it's a fascinating thing. Well, people always, thing. even in the spiritual path, what are your credentials? Well, that I'll happens say, all the time. I mean, you know. I'll say, it's because I have the experience. That's right. So you know what I tell people when they say, why you? I say, why, why not? not? Yeah. yeah exactly. And I say, who better to speak about God than one of his children? And who better to talk to the regular folk out there, which is who this book addresses, just right. regular folk, than one of his own, someone that, I'm a regular gal, I right. have problems, I'm not someone that, right. you know, can stand up there and say, I have all the answers, I don't at all, I deal, uh, you know, I deal daily with issues of faith and depression and confusion and all the rest of it, but I have developed a deep inner relationship with God and it sees me through and that's all I want to express to people is no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through. If you can develop 
a relationship with God, it's going to make it feel that much better. Why, why don't you tell people, I mean, although, you know, you've used the disclaimer on numerous occasions, you know, like that, it doesn't mean that your path has been the path that for everybody, but what has been your journey to have that deep experience? Because really that's all gurus or teachers talk about is their experience. So what has been yours that's connected you to that? Honestly, I... Uh, <laughs> no, we're, we're going to no, do a lie. lie show. <laughs> well, no, because I, I wasn't planning on getting into this, but um, I grew up in a really painful, you know, abusive childhood, and that's not to wallow in poor me, and my inner child is still screwed up and all mm -hmm. that, but the point is that I think when you can not look at mom and dad as being your God figures, which most children do, I had to immediately go to the source. So I can remember being a young girl, like very young. Like five or 10 or 12? Yeah, the, you pro, I'm thinking four or five right now. And I can remember laying in bed and talking to God and saying, look, you know, I... So they, God became your mother God and father. God was my mother and, and father, father from a very young age, and I'm grateful. You see, and that's so where that's every lesson... hard for people lesson. to recommend that to people. Yeah, I mean, I'm not an advocate for miserable childhoods. I mean, <laughs> right. I certainly hope that to... That would be the best way, necessarily, to a little traumatic No, time. I mean, I plan to raise Mike. Hopefully, he's not going to end up on an analyst couch years from now, but, you know... 20 years from now, I'll be sitting in some interviews. Yeah, my childhood was, was so... I had, I had this mother. She wrote mother. books about God. You know, I wanted she, a normal what a, mother. What a pain. <laughs> <laughs> Traveling all the time. But that is it. You know, I mean, for, you know, as far back as I can remember, I just knew there was a God. I, I never had to have it proven to me. I, I could look out my window and, and look at flowers and, and say, wow, something pretty damn incredible must have created something growing out of the dirt when that looks like the, that. Was it th at that point you had the experience that everything was from that same energy, that God or however you describe it? It was just something I always knew. You knew that? that always. The, that the different races and religions and colors always, are always from the always. same. The ocean, the mountains, all the different animals. You know, I was raised Jewish, right? Mm -hmm. And there were all these rules when you're Jewish. And you know, I know a lot of Jews now are going to send me letters and that. This is not to put down the My religion. My parents are going to watch I'm this sorry. show. Listen, I'm sorry. Listen, I love so, the Jewish so religion. So we, we might have, you but might get also, more letters. I her, also let, love her, her address, <laughs> our post office box is in the book. So mom and dad. <laughs> oh. are, the point are your is, mom and dad alive or you don't Yeah, talk? they are, they are. They'll Do you probably, talk to them now? Yeah, I talk to them. Oh. But the point is, I love we the Jewish religion. Them a no. show. They'll probably see it. I love Hinduism, I love Buddhism, I love Christianity, I love all, they're all fascinating to me. But all the little rules and things never made a whole lot of sense to me. You know, you couldn't mix the milk and the meat and the this and the that. And yeah, the, the, sometimes the, the, you have to, in one of the religions, you have to wash your hands coming down, the other one you have to wash them up. I never could figure that out. It's like, my hands are always dirty and it wouldn't help. So. Well, no, ritual is a nice thing. I mean, ritual. Tradition and religion. Tradition and ritual. If it's to remember the source rather than just to keep I just control. never found it getting me any closer to God. And yeah, when I, I would ask questions, yeah, when I would ask questions, you know, I wasn't getting the answers. And that's when I started to seek God, you know, way outside of religious mm -hmm. means. I went to India. I did a lot of traveling. I studied all the different many, many different spiritual teachers and paths, and I, I had every kind of book you could imagine toppling over on my bookshelf. Everything from tarot and crystals and psychic this and, you know, macrobiotic that. I mean, I was a walking, you know, new age bookstore. But then I began to realize that beneath it all, really, what we're all searching for, it's God. It's right. God. It's there always been God. Right. You know, we can couch it in all these different interesting, fascinating things, but it's about we're all sparks of the one great creator and we're all right. trying to get home. Actually, you know, we were talking a lot about the show that it seems to me at this time that it's time that we all came together, you know, and that, you know, we all have like individual visions and, you know, we get channeled this one or we have this guru or not, that, that really at this time the cooperation is more important than each of our individual visions, that we have to learn to work together, we have to learn to work together somehow with as little ego as possible and just come together into that oneness. Yeah. And that's really, the t it's the time for that and we really need to do that. The golden rule, you know, I tell people all the time, if you don't have the perfect mantra and if you continue to eat burgers and dye your hair blonde and listen to Howard Stern, None of that matters in God's eyes if you can remember the one thing, which is the golden rule, which is to love your neighbor as thyself and love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. That's it. If we were to learn nothing else in this lifetime but how to be kind, we would probably all graduate with honors. It's really quite simple. It's really about love. We were talking about, it's about that earlier. It's about love. Right. You know, we were talking, I mean, I've said it on the show before, but, you know, like when Patrice came up, she was talking about, you know, what, what do you 
actually Patricia asked and also I got a call from someone who hadn't seen the show before and said what's the show really about and I said really it's about love and you know in all its forms you know that we have musicians on and singers and artists and psychics and healers and people who've written books and people who've done a lot of things and and really what I try to do is get people who in one form or another express that experience of love and that's and, and that vibration goes out and you know in our hope of the crew and everybody who comes through is is that do people feel that is that what's coming across is that the vibration that's kind of like emanating from the studio and and rippling effect over I hope you so. know the earth yeah and we all hope so I mean that's why you came up and Eli I came so. up with having a troubling little <laughs> we all went out for food many <laughs> seem to have gotten a little flu coming up it was going around the school so <laughs> we get into the studio it's like what? <laughs> First thing he does is, you know, the director comes in and goes, well, hi, everybody. And then you see the hand go to the mouth, and it's like, oh, my God. And the kid vomits right now. Real life, real Alan. Life. Real like, life. God okay, there's no glamour here. This like, is this, real life. This is it. So, so I mean, how how is it with him? Like, I mean, coming from where you came from, you don't want to, like, in, you know, give him any dogma or, or rules. I mean, you just want to express that love through consciousness and what is right in the time. If you're in, in consciousness in the moment, you'll do the right thing. Let me tell you, he teaches me about God. I don't teach him about God. Mm -hmm. The kid teaches me about God all mm -hmm. the time. We cannot pass a homeless person in the street without him saying, Mommy, Mommy, give him some money. And I'll say, Eli, I, I don't have any money to give him. He says, and they don't have any food. I mm -hmm. mean, this kid is so... Will he take he it out of his me. allowance money? Absolutely. He will? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. The he's better man than me, we know that. That's clear. That's fantastic. So, uh, I guess, why don't we set up for Marilyn's third song? It's called Learning to Love. Perfect. So, yeah, let's, yeah, that's, <laughs> Perfect. this is a very incredible song. So, let's just talk for another minute until they get set up and get the tape in. Uh, so, how do you feel like, I mean, do you feel like being, you, you live in, in Los Angeles near the ocean. Do you feel, right. do you get to the ocean every day? Is that inspiring for you? Because I do. I mean, Santa Barbara's close to the ocean, Yeah, too. I see it from my windows. I hear the waves crashing at night. I don't go on the sand every day. Um, yeah, I, it's the only way I could live in L.A. is to live near yeah, the I water. It's it's, great. I love it. Yeah, I, absolutely I know the sound of it. the ocean is just too much. No, I love it. I lay there, you know, sometimes one or two in the morning, and I just hear the waves, and I just go, God, I'm so lucky to live here. Right. Yeah, the yeah. feeling of gratefulness. Very much. All right, so if we're ready for Marilyn, learning to love. Through our hearts, spirits 
This song is for you. Through our hearts we feel the joy. Friends, we are learning to love again. We are learning to be love again. Learning again and it's about time and it really feels good. So before I forget, uh, you know, if anyone's interested in uh, Marilyn's old album, new album, Patrice's book, please call me and I'll give you all the information you need. It's 805-687-2053. Marilyn plays concerts all over. Patrice talks at different book signings and all. So if there's any information you want, you know, please give me a call, 805-687-2053. Okay, so if you could, you know, we have a few minutes left in the show, it goes so quickly, but if you could, you know, simply give, at the end of the book, I know that you gave like some simple things that we could all kind of remember to help us proceed. Why don't you kind of read through that? Well, I'll give you just a couple of them yeah, since okay. time is short. Um, here's one. Care about what matters. Hint, at the end, you won't remember or care much about the money you made but you will about who you loved and who loved you back. This will become obvious when you start tuning in. Just remember, all you can take with you is who you became and what you learned on your journey. The rest is Maya, illusion. And here's one of my favorites, one that I really need to practice. <laughs> See, I mean, I just wrote the thing. It doesn't mean that I do all this. No, um, it's like <laughs> the Bob Dylan songs. I mean, they change everybody's life, but I don't think they ever changed his, really. You know? well, I hope you do better. What do they say? That which you teach, right? right? Is that which you, you most need, need to learn? To learn right? um, start to surrender. You may know this as thy will be done, or let go and let God. The fact is that he who created butterfly wings and the Himalayas knows his stuff. You may want to let him lead for a change. Um, and last, here's a good one. Lastly, look toward the journey home. Your soul, your being, is here for all eternity. So don't sweat the small stuff. And uh, how is it that you think that you know, like in everybody's lives, yours and mine, that little things begin begin to really matter, and they you know they get blown way out of proportion, and we forget you know just the beauty and the love that is there for us and. It's because in this modern day society, we're all running so fast 
just this, the the pressure just to survive, right? You know, just to pay the mortgage and make sure the kids are fed and, and keep up with everything that, that our society tells us is so important uh, makes it very difficult to take the time. And I don't really know, I don't really have any quick fixes for that. You know, hopefully it's something that just, I mean, As do you we try to wake do up? something every day? Do you try to meditate to Definitely. like come home? Do you Definitely. to quiet down? And you know what I you know what I tell people too, because people ask about this, and we are all so busy. Not everyone has time to do a formal practice of meditation. But what I tell people is that at night, before you go to sleep, because everyone ultimately at some point in the evening lays down and the lights are off and they get start to get quiet before they drift off, and that is really a perfect time, I think, to commune with God because you're right there. You know, what I do when I start to drift off to sleep, that's when I kind of do a, you know, reflecting on the day sort of thing, and that's when I just sort of go, oh, hi, God. Just like take a few deep yeah. breaths. And Me again. Oh, God, I haven't you thought know, about like you too much. You know, kind of like a prayer and exactly. semi pr whatever you feel is no, I the cuddle, best. I cuddle up with God, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not in a relationship right now, you mm -hmm. know, with an actual physical person, and right. so at night, I, I really, I mean, it sounds hokey, but... That's what I do. I cuddle up with God. I go, hi, it's me again, your kid. You know, it's interesting. I don't know if you noticed it. I mean, Patrice came in earlier, and so, you know, she, she and her son came to my house, and then we went out to dinner. But in my house, because I'm not in a relationship now either, I have, and I was wondering, like, how long this was going to happen. It was, like, intimate with God. And I was saying that this is my time not to be intimate with another human being in that way, but to be intimate with God. And it's interesting that, you know, in a similar way. That Listen, this is not to say I wouldn't like to be in a relationship. Uh, I would, but that's a whole other show yeah, we can do. But yeah, we, we'll come back next week for the, <laughs> but the, the relationship. The point Relationships is made easy. That's going to be Oh, a, God. No, it would be relationships made easy. Not. Right. Because <laughs> I don't know how you make those easy. Right. Um, but the truth is, let's face it, your relationship with God is the, the one first, relationship. Right. It's, it's the first and the last. Right. It's the only one that never leaves you because right. children grow up and spouses you leave and pets right. die and, you know, right. God has been with us that's, since the that's beginning. That's who we are. I mean, that's, you know, it's like even a separation that we and God, I mean, even that's the part of the illusion of this plane. It's all a great mystery, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah, we were talking earlier, like Just what a, a great, great experiment it is. It's know. a fascinating thing to be a human being. And... Uh, you know, hopefully we learn our lessons and get to go to an even greater place. But but you feel like in the sense that writing this book like like elevated you, like first of all it puts you in a place where it's almost like you, you're forced into being more conscious. Absolutely, because you're, you know why? People are looking at you right, more. Right, they know who you are. Well, now. not only that, I mean, but, but you know, in a way, even when I stumble and I do, it's still perfect because I go, right. see, oh, there's me, the woman who wrote about God being right. just as stupid as ever. Right. But you know what? As stupid as everybody else. <laughs> Here I am, stupid as everybody else. And and you know what? And the good news is, he still loves me. Right. She still loves me. Right. It still loves me. Right. Yeah, I think you make that point in the book. It's like, you know, all the words we were talking about this early, but not to get caught up in the he, she, it, you know. Whatever you want to Whatever you want to call it. Whatever. Because, in, in, as, you know, my experience is when that experience happens within a human being, it feels like love, you know, that's and that's, that's the name, it feels like love. That's it, that's exactly right. And the fact is that we're here, and we're here to learn certain lessons, and the greatest lesson is exactly what you said and what Marilyn sang about. Learning to love again. It's about learning to love, and. Right, just being open, because that's what we're made of. We're, you know, interesting, we're made of love. Yes. God is love, God is that life force, and that's who we are. And if we could just, like, open to that. Right, and you know and just what? just get out of the way. Well, one of the greatest practices, they say, too, is to see the face of God in everyone Everything. that you meet. Not always easy, right. by the way. Not always easy, but uh, powerful when you can do it. Right. Uh, because then whomever you speak to, it's God speaking right. back. Every, every animal, tree, every, every plant, right. it's God. And you wouldn't do what we do, to, you wouldn't pour filth in the ocean, you wouldn't cut no. a tree down with the same no. disrespect. So, I don't know, I guess we're getting to the end of the show. So, Patrice, thank you. Marilyn, thank you. Thank you. you, thank you, out there, in there. The crew, thank you. Please, go inside, be quiet, let the love come into you, let the love come out of you. Be that love. Thank you, good night, God bless you.